Most of the DFS contest selection advice out there is outdated and it is costing you money in today's games. My name is Jordan Chand, I'm the head coach here at Sabersim, and in this video I'm going to unveil the best contest selection and bankroll management strategy to maximize your profits playing DFS. Before we get into it, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get a notification every single time we go live. Now, let's go ahead and jump right in. The fundamental problem with contest selection is that it's hard to know what contest to play every single night. There are a ton of different contests and contest types in the lobby, and most of us can't afford to max out every single one of them. We have to pick and choose what contests we want to invest our money into. We want to take advantage of every edge we can get in DFS, and selecting contests strategically is one of the best ways to get an edge. Yet, some of the most popular systems and strategies people have come up with for contest selection just totally miss the mark here. Focusing on single entry, maximizing average top 1% payout, or even what we suggested in the past of maximizing the effective entrance of a contest all actually have the same flaw. They try to maximize ROI at all costs. And this is the problem because it misses the most important thing how likely you are to actually realize that ROI, meaning actually winning real money in your contests. These systems ignore the massive swings of variance in DFS. They're too focused on what works in theory rather than what it actually takes to be profitable in practice. The old school 80% cash, 20% GPP strategy actually attempted to take into account variance. It combined a lower variance contest type like cash games with a higher variance contest type like GPPs. But this system only worked when DFS was a much easier game to beat, and cash games are really no longer a consistent or reliable form of income anymore. But even more, all of these different frameworks were really just hypotheses, because nobody did any work to actually test if they were right. The risk here is massive. Following the wrong contest selection strategies can make you go broke and fast. Our data shows that just choosing the wrong contest to play can literally double your chances of going broke over the course of the season. And again, don't get me wrong, this complaint applies just as much to our old suggestions as it does to anybody else. We drew on our experience to come up with the effective entrance framework, but we left it as that educated guess because we didn't have a way to actually test it until now. Our DFS profit plan is the result of a ton of research and testing and analysis, and before I get into it, some of what I'm going to recommend here might be counterintuitive or even controversial. We created a five-part series walking through in detail how we conducted the research for this project, and that series ends with an hour-long interview I did with Sabersim's data scientist, Eric, who is the lead researcher here. If you're interested in learning more how we did this research after watching this video, I'd check it out and you can find it on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts by searching Sabersim Behind the Sims. But for now, I'm going to unveil the framework of the DFS Profit Plan. Let's dive into the fundamentals of the framework here. First off, you're going to play GPPs only. It is difficult to beat the rake in cash games in 2022. The average cash games player is actually pretty decent and there isn't enough recreational money in the pool to offset that. It's too easy to find a decent set of projections and an optimizer and build a competitive cash games lineup. The big prize pools and GPPs attract a lot more recreational players and it's a harder game type to solve, so there's still a ton of money to be made there and that's where we're going to be investing our money. The second is that you're going to use smart bankroll management principles, and that starts with establishing a bankroll, whatever you are willing to commit to DFS. Playing GPPs in DFS is very high variance, which means the swings to that bankroll are going to be very high. You're going to lose a lot and then earn back almost all of your profit in slates where you have a really big score. This means you can't afford to be playing a big chunk of that bankroll in any given slate, or you will just straight up go broke and really quickly. Third, you're going to think about your contests as a portfolio. Most people don't just play a single contest every night, but whether or not a contest is a good one or a bad one to play depends on what you're playing alongside it. We're not going to be comparing contest A versus contest B here in a vacuum. We are asking and answering the question, what is the best combined set of contests I can play that gives me the greatest opportunity to make money with the lowest risk? In the lobby, you're going to bucket or separate contests into diversifier contests and elevator contests. Diversifiers are 20 max and 150 max contests that allow you to get a lot of unique lineups in play and reduce your variance. Elevator contests are gonna be the single entry and three max contests where you can play against soft competition, 
and you have a huge boost to your ROI when you hit. Different contests have different strengths and weaknesses here. Some allow you to play a lot of unique lineups, like I mentioned, but against tougher fields. Others are going to have softer fields, but higher variance. Balancing these contest types is key to maximizing your profit and minimizing your risk. And finally, you want to enter a unique lineup into every single entry that you're playing. This will smooth out that variance curve and you'll realize your profit more quickly. Winning money more quickly allows you to reinvest that money and compound it into more and more winnings. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the process of what it actually looks like when you're entering your lineups. First off, determine your daily wager, and we recommend between 2.5% and 5% of the bankroll you established before. Now, this is going to depend a little bit on your edge in the sport and your risk tolerance, but the main thing to note here is not to exceed 5%. Our data shows that your risk of ruin multiplies exponentially as you exceed more than 5% on a slate, so a maximum of 5%. Then, when it comes to actually entering contests here, first of all, GPPs only, but you're going to start with 50 to 75% of your daily wager in those diversifier contests. You're going to fill lowest to highest entry fee with 20 maxes and 150 maxes. And you should be trying to max out these contests when possible, but if you can't max a contest and stay within that 50 to 75% range, then don't max it. The one exception here is that if you can go up in stakes and fill a contest or max a contest instead of not maxing it at the lower stakes, do that. It sounds a little confusing, but here's a really good example of it. Play and max out the $1.20 max instead of playing 40 entries into the 50 cent mini max if that's your particular situation. Then you're going to use elevators to fill out the rest of your daily wager. You'll start with contests that exclude the top pros. These are going to be contests with an entry fee less than $3 or less than $5 with less than a $25,000 total prize pool. You'll want to enter all the single entries in that range, going from cheapest to most expensive, and then repeat with the three max contests. If you've entered all of these contests and you still haven't hit your daily wager, then repeat the process with the contests top pros can actually enter. The only difference here is at this point, you can just go cheapest to most expensive, filling up all of the single entry and three max contests along the way. Here's an example with a $100 bankroll. You would start with the goal of entering $50 to $75 of diversifiers. You'd start $5, 20 entries into the quarter jukebox. Then another $20 of 20 entries into the $1.20 max, the solo shot. And then finally, $50, 100 entries into the 50 cent mini max. That's $75. That leaves us with $25 to fill into the elevators. And we'll start first with the non-experienced single entry contests. In this case, that's the $1 daily dollar and the $3 pickoff. Then we'll focus on the non-experienced three max contests. That's going to be three entries into the $1 strike three and three entries into the $3 hot shot. Then finally, we can go into the experienced player contests and we'll put one entry into the $5 single entry chin music and then just one entry into the $5 five tool, which is the three max at $5. Now, I hope that was a little bit helpful here, but I think it'd be really helpful if you could watch me actually enter my contests using this framework live. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, let's go ahead and use the DFS Profit Plan to enter into some contests for tonight's baseball slate. So I'm here on DraftKings. Uh, we've got the 14-game main slate here on tap tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and just select the slate, uh, tournaments, and guaranteed here. Uh, and I'm going to be using a $200 daily wager here for this example because we already walked through that $100 example before. So let's talk a little bit about what this looks like. The first thing is we want 50 to 75% of our entries in diversifiers. We're going to fill lowest entry fee to highest to get there. So we're looking for 100 to $150 in diversifier contests. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to skip the micro mini max and these dime time contests. They're a little bit too small of prize pools for me to want to enter here. Uh, our analysis also started with the quarter jukebox being the smallest contest that we entered into any portfolio. That said, if you have a very small bankroll, uh, I think these can be great ways to get a lot of lineups in play very quickly. But I'm going to go ahead and start with the quarter jukebox. So we'll go ahead and click enter here. And for now, all I'm going to do is put a placeholder lineup in here. I'm not going to worry about who's in this and just quickly fill out a lineup and then click enter. And now we can use the bulk enter to continue to fill up. So let's go ahead and again, sort by entry fee, lowest, highest. We need another 19 entries in the quarter jukebox. We want to fill that out. We're going to skip the satellites, the little these little contest types, these winner take alls, right? None of we're, we're focusing uh, primarily here on the the GPPs. 
So we'll go ahead and click 150 lineups into the uh, 50 cent minimax, and that takes us to $80 total because we have that one quarter from the other um, quarter quarter jukebox entry here. And then we get to the $1 minimax. So if I try to play 150 lineups here, right, we are going to be well over. Even Okay, so I can't enter more than 300 at a time, but we're already well over our total daily wager share trying to do that. So we can't afford to max out the $1 minimax. So what do we do in this particular situation? We look to see if there's a contest at... Uh, Higher stakes, um, I guess in this case, this isn't really exactly higher stakes, but it is further down the page here that we can't afford to fill out. That is a diversifier, and that's the solo shot. So what we'll do instead there is put 20 lineups into the solo shot. And that takes us to $100 total. That's going to be 50% of our daily wager share in diversifiers here. Uh, and this is kind of where you can have a little bit of your own decision-making come into play here. So uh, technically, we're good there. If we want to do 50%, that's the minimum we want in diversifiers. We could go on and fill our elevators here. Uh, we also still have kind of $50 more, another 25% of our daily wager share that we could put into diversifiers here if we wanted to. Uh, my general rule of thumb here is if I can get at least another 20 entries entered into a contest here, uh, I will continue to fill diversifiers until I can get up to that 75% threshold. That's because I like to play a lot of unique lineups. I want more of my money entered in diversifiers. That's the way I like to play. If you prefer having more money entered into elevator type contests, single entries and three max, it's perfectly fine to just stop at 50%. Uh, but what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't just play another five lineups in some random contest to force your way up to 75% uh, total diversifier share. So in this case, uh, I'm going to just enter another $50 into the $1 minimax. That's going to take us right to 150. Feeling pretty good about that here. So now that takes us to our elevator contests, right? And the way we want to do this is we want to focus on the uh, non-experienced single entries first, then the non-experienced three max. So that's going to be basically everything under $5 with a $25,000 or less prize pool and everything under $3 period. So let's go ahead and look at this. One thing that can be useful here is to just type in single entry and you'll quickly see all of the single entries here um, that fit into that. So uh, the chin music is not a uh, non-experienced contest. Experienced players can enter this because it is exactly $5 to enter. So one thing to, work, to note there. But I'm going to enter the daily dollar and the pickoff, right? And then I'm going to look at three entry maxes. So both of these are going to also be non-experienced players, right? So now let's go ahead here. And we are getting a little bit closer. Let's start filling up more of these contests. So I can fill up the $5 single entry. And I know there was a $5 three max as well. And the next three entry max is at $20. That might be a little bit too high for me. So let's go back to the single entries here. We see we have a base hit. And that's going to put me at $198 total. At this point, there's not really anything else I can enter here. Uh, the next single entry is $25. The next three entry max is... Mm -hmm. Uh, $20. I'm already at 75% of my daily wager here in diversifier contests. I didn't get exactly to $200, but this works pretty good here for what I want to play here for tonight. So then all you would want to do is go ahead and click submit, and that's going to enter all of your entries here. And I've got 252 unique lineups that I'm going to be playing here in tonight's slate in all of these contests. Now that you've seen the plan and seen it in practice, let's talk a little bit more about how we came up with this. We didn't want to just come up with yet another rule of thumb. We wanted to use data to come up with a concrete plan that we could prove. We simulated thousands of contests using real lineups to see how different portfolios of contests impact your swings and your profit over the course of a season. This wasn't just a calculation of theoretical ROI in different contests. We actually tracked a real bankroll over the course of a baseball season in our sims. And these sims mimic the experience of actually playing DFS with real bankroll swings. And the key lesson you need to take away here is that the variance in DFS is massive. A winning player with a 20% ROI is only going to see on average 6 to 8 winning days a month. And the longest consecutive losing streak over the course of a full season for a profitable player is going to be 15 to 25 days straight. And there is a legitimate risk of ruin here. As you can see in this graph, a player with around a $800 bankroll playing $20 of just single entry contests a night is going to go bust 28% of the time and over 50% of their seasons in our sims will be unprofitable. And this is true even if their long-term theoretical ROI is 11%. You cannot afford to get this stuff wrong. 
By focusing on contest portfolios, you can reduce the variance here while still maximizing your upside. And here's an example of what these different portfolios look like that we tested. We basically tested combinations of different portfolios with different levels of single entry versus multi-entry focused contests. And we found that these mixed portfolios we recommend are the best ways to enter contests. Portfolios of lineups that focus on single entry or multi-entry contests too much take on an unnecessary additional risk. And actually, focusing on single entry and three entry contests only is one of the worst ways to select contests. As you can see here, you need to have a $5,000 bankroll to have a 0% chance of going bust, just playing $100 a night in single entry contests over the course of the season. That would be just, that would be 2% of your bankroll per slate. A multi-entry focused approach, in this case, needs a bankroll of $3,500 to reduce your risk of ruin to zero. There is a sweet spot though here, and that is what this system essentially helps you exploit. And this is why contest portfolios are important. The $5 chin music, the single entry, is not better or worse than maxing the 25 cent quarter jukebox. It depends on the context of what you've entered already. Some contests have soft competition, but the variant swings are huge. Others might be tougher to beat, but allow you to get a lot of lineups in play and smooth out your variance. And this is why you need to focus on these portfolios. Most people out there that claim one contest is better than the other are just missing the point. Following the DFS profit plan is the best way to get the most out of your DFS bankroll, whether you use SaberSim or not. But following this plan is probably going to mean that you're going to be building a lot more unique lineups than you're used to. And if you're not used to it, it's going to be a bit of an adjustment for you. You need a tool that you can trust to build winning GPP lineups. And since you're going to be playing so many different contests, your tool also needs to help you get those lineups into the right contests at lock. SaberSim is the only DFS tool on the market that can handle this responsibility. And we have tons of videos on our app and YouTube channel showing you how to use it. We also have the only completely free seven days trial in the DFS industry, so you can try it out for yourself and see how it all works. Sign up for your trial on our site, sabersim.com. And in the meantime, thanks and good luck.